Hey there, welcome over here to my kitchen. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you some of my favorite recipes and ways to meal prep. Everything is super, super easy, so you don't have to worry about that. But anyways, all of these meal prepping ideas are perfect if you are in a rush at night and you need a quick dinner. Also, you could easily give any of these meals to a family friend or a neighbor who might be in need of a meal. I really hope you enjoy these recipes and let's go get to cooking. We're gonna begin this meal prep today by making this amazing sausage lasagna and a sausage egg casserole. So I have two pounds of Italian sausage right here, one of the pounds for the lasagna, the other pound for the egg casserole. I added both of the pounds into my large pot with one diced up white onion and I'm going to completely cook this sausage through. Now that our sausage is all cooked up, you're gonna remove one of the pounds of the sausage into a separate bowl. You're pretty much dividing the two pounds of sausage at this point. This lasagna recipe is mega easy. It is so easy to throw together. So I just have a nine by 13 baking dish. This is just an aluminum baking dish in my jar of Prego sauce. I'm just pouring a little bit to the bottom just so the noodles don't stick to the bottom of the pan. I spread that out as even as possible. Then you're gonna add some of your oven ready lasagna noodles on top. Of course, use more or less noodles depending on your preference. And then I added more of the jar of marinara sauce, some of our sausage, and for the cheeses I'm using, I'm using mozzarella and Parmesan, about two cups of mozzarella total and a cup and a half of Parmesan total. And then one container of cottage cheese. I just layered everything on top of each other, three layers total. To give this a little bit more pizzazz, I sprinkled some Italian seasoning on top of each of those three layers. Before I stick this in the freezer, I'm going to put some clean grop on top, followed by some heavy duty aluminum foil. On on top of that foil, I did write how to reheat this in the oven. You're gonna thaw this and bake it on 350 degrees for about 50 minutes. If you are gonna bake it while it's still frozen, bake on 350 degrees covered with foil for 90 minutes and uncovered for an additional 10 minutes or until it is nice and bubbly. To finish up our sausage and egg casserole in this bowl, I'm adding eight eggs in right now. After I am through with that, you're gonna add a cup and a half of some milk, or you could use heavy cream, whatever your preference is. And then to give it some flavor, add a fourth a teaspoon of garlic powder, and then just a little bit of some salt and pepper. Whisk this all together. To my 9x13 baking dish, this is another aluminum one. I'm spraying it with some non-stick spray. And then you're gonna add 30 ounces of some hash browns. These hash browns are thawed out, so they're no longer frozen. I do wanna mention the reason why I am using a bunch of these aluminum throwaway type of containers is because I do like to give out these meals to friends and family members. And you know, they might not be able to give your baking dishes back, so it's always good to hand out the aluminum ones but on top of that I added our cooked up pound of sausage that we cooked up earlier with one cup of some sharp cheddar cheese and then you're going to pour the egg mixture as even as possible on top of course mine was far from perfect I covered this with some aluminum foil and I'm gonna place this in a preheated oven to 375 degrees for about 40 minutes. After those 40 minutes of baking, I pulled it out of the oven. You're gonna remove the aluminum foil and bake this in the oven for another 20 to 30 minutes or until it's completely cooked through. Once out of the oven and cooled down, I just cut this into serving size pieces. I absolutely love doing this because seriously, this is the quickest breakfast or snack idea ever. You could stick this in your fridge for a few days or keep it in your freezer. And then anyone who wants a quick breakfast or a quick snack can grab a little section of this, put it in the microwave for about a minute or two, and that is it. I also placed a little name tag on this just because I know my husband is is always looking in the fridge and freezer and can't find things, so that's mainly for him. 
Now we're making one of my husband's all-time favorites, white chicken chili enchiladas. He always asks me to make enchiladas. It's kind of funny, but in my Instant Pot, I have three large frozen chicken breasts. I added one cup of some chicken broth. The chicken broth was hot. That's why it was steaming. I'm going to cook this on high pressure for 16 minutes with a five-minute natural release. Here it is, all shredded out of my Instant Pot. You pretty much want about five cups of shredded chicken total, so you could boil your chicken on the stove or anything like that and it will work out. I just added one cup of some sour cream and to season this up I'm going to be adding a half a teaspoon of some cumin chili powder, garlic powder, and a dash of some salt and pepper and then you're going to stir everything to combine. Assembling these enchiladas really can't get any easier than this. I have two 10 by 8 casserole dishes right here and 28 ounces of this green chili enchilada sauce. I did double this recipe, so if you only want to make one of these casserole dishes worth of these enchiladas, you certainly can. On the bottom of my casserole dishes, I added a very small amount of enchilada sauce just so the enchiladas won't stick in the end. Inside of my flour tortillas, I put a small amount of some Monterey Jack cheese along with about a third a cup of the chicken mixture, rolled it up, and then placed it in my casserole dish. Lastly, you're going to add the remainder of the enchilada sauce on both of your pans of enchiladas. Try to do it as even as possible. And then, of course, you got to have some more cheese on top. So I'm adding an additional cup of Monterey Jack cheese to both of our pans of enchiladas. Again, with the heavy duty aluminum foil, I'm placing it on top. And these casserole pans actually came with lids, so I placed the lids on the very top. But the baking instructions for these are bake on 350 for 25 minutes if thawed. If still frozen, bake on 350 covered for 30 minutes and uncovered for an additional 15 minutes. Now we're making three different dump and go crock pot freezer meals and I am so excited about this one. I have already written on all of my gallon size Ziploc bags, the cooking time and if you need to add any liquid such as water or broth right before you place everything into the crock pot to cook. So I placed my Ziploc bag into my baggy rack. I got it from Amazon. It's the green thing holding the bag up. So we're gonna start on the chicken enchilada soup first. To my bag, I just added in 10 ounces of red enchilada sauce. The rest of the ingredients you're gonna be adding in, it's just eight ounces of cream of chicken soup, two cans of black beans, both are drained and rinsed, one can of corn that is drained, 10 ounces of Rotel. My Rotel is the one with the green chilies in it. And then you're gonna be adding in one onion and one green bell pepper. I diced both of those into smaller pieces. For your seasonings, you're gonna be adding in one teaspoon of cumin, a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, and then just some salt and pepper to taste. For the chicken, I chose to use two medium-sized chicken breasts. Of course, use more or less chicken depending on your preference. I sealed this up and made sure that I had written that I needed to add 15 ounces of chicken broth in right before I start my crock pot and that this cooks on low for six hours. This next crock pot recipe is beef stew. I'm starting out by chopping up two potatoes into smaller pieces, half of an onion, and about three large carrots. In your standing Ziploc bag, you're gonna be adding the veggies that you just chopped up with your green beans. These are just frozen green beans, about 12 ounces of those. If you do prefer fresh green beans, you could add fresh green beans as a substitute. Next, I'm just adding in 14 ounces of some crushed tomatoes. 
the remainder of the ingredients that I'm adding in. It's just a fourth a cup of some Worcestershire sauce, salt and pepper to taste, two bay leaves, a half a teaspoon of some oregano, and then for your beef stew meat, I added in one pound of beef stew meat, but you could add in anywhere between one to two pounds of beef stew meat, just depending on how beefy you would like it to be. I made sure to write on the bag to cook this on low for eight hours and to add two cups of water in when you put this in the crock pot. For this next dump and go crock pot recipe, this is chicken tacos and this recipe really couldn't get any easier. I'm starting out by adding a can of black beans and corn to the bag, both are drained and rinsed. Next you're going to want to add in about 16 ounces of your favorite salsa to the bag as well. Along with one diced up white onion, you could also add a bell pepper, but at that point I actually didn't have any bell peppers left on hand. I added in a tablespoon of some taco seasoning and two medium medium-sized chicken breasts. Now we're going to be making two sour cream noodle bakes and one classic shepherd's pie. Like we did previously with the sausage, I'm going to be cooking all of the ground beef up together. So I'm using three pounds of ground beef total, one pound of ground beef for each of these recipes. Now that the ground beef is cooked through and I drained out all of the excess grease, I'm going to remove two pounds of the ground beef into this separate bowl. The two pounds of ground beef will be for the sour cream noodle bake. The one pound of ground beef we're leaving in the pan is for the shepherd's pie. Now we're making the mashed potatoes for the shepherd's pie. I'm making them in the instant pot, but you can make them however you want to. I added my trevet to the instant pot with one cup of water and two pounds of Yukon golden potatoes that I chopped into smaller pieces. These are gonna cook on high pressure for 10 minutes with a natural release of five minutes. Here they are, all cooked through. I'm just going to remove the potatoes to a separate plate and then drain all of the excess water at the bottom of my instant pot. To finish making the mashed potatoes, I added all the potatoes back into my Instant Pot and then you're going to be adding about three tablespoons of butter with a fourth a cup of milk and some salt and pepper. Then you're going to mash them up. They are seriously so easy to mash. It's my favorite um, making mashed potatoes in the Instant Pot. It's so simple. You might need to add more milk or more butter just depending on personal preference. Now that our potatoes are finished being mashed and they're nice and creamy, I set those to the side to cool. And now we're gonna finish up our shepherd's pie. So to my pound of ground beef in my Dutch oven, I added a half a teaspoon of rosemary, thyme, garlic powder, a little bit of some salt and pepper. Next, you're gonna be adding a tablespoon of some Worcestershire sauce and two tablespoons of some flour. You're gonna mix all of these ingredients together for about 30 seconds. Now that the flour is well incorporated to the ground beef and the rest of the ingredients, you're going to be adding in your two tablespoons of tomato paste and get the tomato paste combined with the ground beef. And then you're going to be adding your one cup of beef broth and then give this a really good stir and let it simmer for about a minute or two. The very last thing you're gonna add is 12 ounces of some frozen mixed vegetables. Give this a really good stir and then your shepherd's pie is ready to assemble. I did let both the ground beef shepherd's pie mixture and the mashed potatoes cool before assembling, but now I'm just adding it to one of my aluminum pans, spreading it out as even as possible. And then you're gonna lay the mashed potatoes on top. Try to spread the mashed potatoes out as even as possible. It might be a little bit tricky. After I added my cup and a half of some shredded sharp cheddar cheese on top, I covered this with some aluminum foil. This is gonna bake on 350 for 35 minutes. If baking while frozen, bake on 350 covered for 30 minutes and uncovered for an additional 20 minutes. 
Now we're going to finish up the sour cream and noodle bake. So to this large pot of some boiling water, I'm adding 16 ounces of some egg noodles in. Now to my pan, I'm going to be adding our two pounds of ground beef that's already cooked to that with plenty of some salt and pepper. Lastly, you're going to add in 30 ounces of some tomato sauce. Give this a really good stir. Bring it up to a simmer for about five minutes or so. I know this seems pretty simple and basic, but you got to trust me. This this recipe is amazing. While I have that simmering on the stove, I'm going to begin to work on the egg noodle mixture. So I have my egg noodles we cooked up. I just drained them. I'm adding two cups of some cottage cheese now along with one cup of some sour cream. This recipe actually calls for one cup of some sliced green onions. I couldn't find green onions at my store, so I just added in a little under a tablespoon of some dried chives and it worked out well in the end. I just gave this a really good stir. After I was through stirring together our egg noodle mixture, I waited for our ground beef and tomato sauce to cool down. Then I added it into the egg noodles and I'm going to stir everything to combine. This makes for two 9 by 13 baking dishes. Of course, you could half this recipe very, very easily. I'm just going to add them in as even as possible on each side and then add a cup and a half of some sharp cheddar cheese on top of both of these. After I was through placing aluminum foil on the both of these, I placed the little tag on top and taped it on saying how long to bake it for. These bake on 350 for 20 to 25 minutes. If still frozen, bake on 375 covered for 45 minutes, uncovered for an additional 20 minutes. And that is it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it and got some meal prepping inspiration. As usual, if you have questions about anything, go ahead and leave them in the comments down below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. I will see you in my next video. Bye for now.